Welcome to the MSME Radio Network, a division of the Multiple Sclerosis Global Support Network. The following program broadcast is an original creation by the broadcast entity. Discussion within the following broadcast should be used for informational purposes only and is not a substitute for professional medical advice or consultation. Before considering application of any broadcast content in the following program, please consult your health care provider. If you feel you are having a medical emergency, please contact your local health services for immediate assistance. MSME Media and the Multiple Sclerosis Global Support Network do not guarantee or warrant the accuracy of information in the broadcast to follow. The Multiple Sclerosis Global Support Network provisions broadcast services to program host. Information discussed in the broadcast does not necessarily reflect the views, opinions, or goals of the network and are solely those of the show broadcast host. Should you wish to host a broadcast, please visit our website at msmemedia.com and submit a request to become a program host. We thank you for listening to the MSME Radio Network. Enjoy the show. is Shirley Merritt and I want to welcome you to my show. I call it Raspberry Lemonade. Let's talk. First, I want to thank God for giving me this blessing of bringing this discussion to this forum. I also want to thank the staff of MS and Me Radio for affording me this opportunity once again. Today, I want to welcome new author Mashia M. Bean to my show. Hi, Mashia. Hello, Shirley. How are you? I'm fine, dear. How are you? I'm wonderful. Thank you for having me on. You are so welcome, and thank you so much for being here with us today. You're welcome. Mashia, um, you're a first-time author. Tell us the name of your book, and give us just a brief uh, description of it. Uh, my book is called Unbroken. I am still standing. It is my true life story of, of me being molested as a young girl and going through my childhood growing up, uh, raising myself, basically. Um, and now I'm dealing with multiple sclerosis and taking my journey on that. So, MS is not the first traumatic thing that has happened in your life? No. Um, so, um... So, okay, so elaborate a little bit for us. Let's talk about that a little bit. Uh, multiple sclerosis. Um, I was diagnosed at the age of 36. But uh, thinking back on my memory uh, episodes when I was 19, starting at the age of 19. So I, um, geez. I remember growing up, I'm um, having my left side giving out of me a lot, not understanding, blacking out, not understanding why I'm blacking out. The doctor is saying, I have low iron. I never heard about an MRI. I never knew that even if this was an MRI, a spinal tap. And I'm a young, young girl, just living my life, enjoying. So one um, morning, I woke up and I was blind in my right eye at the age of 36. And imagine I was freaking tripping out, tripping, tripping. I yelled out to my family, I can't see out of my freaking eye. They thought I was playing. Went to the eye doctor. They um, said I need an MRI. I didn't have insurance to cover that. So I had to wait until I was able to get seen by the county clinic to get tested. And I doctor asking questions and had me do those tests, walking and balancing stuff. And he says, I believe we have multiple sclerosis. So and I didn't know what that was. I have two family members, so I have that. Mm -hmm. So I, I didn't really, really ask that because I don't have it. I didn't 
So, um, basically, you said you were around 19 when you started having your blackouts. Those were your initial yeah. symptoms. Um, did you have a lot of blackouts, several blackouts, or, or just a few? Um, a few. Every couple of years, I blackout. Every, like, three or four years, I blackout. Oh, wow. And that was, like, between the ages of 19 and 30-something? Um, yes. Hmm. Yes, yes. Okay, and then when you started having the eye problems, what age were you? In your 30s? Um, I not until about 36 that morning when I woke up. Okay, so the only symptoms that you were having were the blackouts, and that went on for a couple of decades. Yeah. Okay. And then the, the pain is on my left side. My left side is kept feeling like it was dangling on my arm, like it was dangling on my leg, which is heavy. So I don't understand what was going on. Mm hmm So, um, basically, um, you said you were 36, I believe, when you were diagnosed. Is that right? Yes. Okay. And, so um, I'm sorry? It's 2008. 2008. Okay, so that was that doesn't seem like that was that long ago. It was what about nine years ago, I guess. Yes. Okay. yes. Wow. Did you have to go through? I've heard a lot of people say, and I uh, fortunately I didn't have to go through this, but a lot of people say that they have their symptoms are so bizarre that they go to the doctor and they get misdiagnosed. Did you have to go through a lot of that misdiagnosis? Well, the only thing I can say I've ever heard of MRI is a spinal tap. So the doctor will say I had low iron. That was the only thing. So I had to take iron pills. And then they did tell me to go to a primary doctor. But the doctors didn't know what was going on. They didn't. They didn't. They didn't know. They didn't. <laughs> they didn't say maybe I'm having vertigo or I'm nauseated or something and let me be blacking out. So were they treating you, were they trying to treat you with, like, medications for motion sickness and things like that when they said that, that you might have been having uh, vertigo or were they giving you prescriptions for vertigo or did no one, no one tied it in with MS, is that right? No, no prescriptions, no one tied it in with MS. Wow. So how many times do you no. feel like you were probably misdiagnosed? I just, I only went twice. I, I know I only went to doctors twice when I, my husband made me go. Mm hmm To get checked with. The other times I didn't go to the doctors when I blacked out. I just didn't think, I didn't, I didn't go. What did you think might be happening when, when you didn't go? <sighs> yeah, I don't know. Cause I asked, I was like, I was going to die right here. I didn't want really to get checked out. I didn't know what was going on. I thought maybe I was like partying so much and not getting any rest. So you were kind of afraid to find out what it could be, like maybe it could be something more devastating, something you weren't willing yeah. to hear about. Yeah, correct. Yeah, correct. Mm. Okay, so, um, okay, so then you, 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 you're now in your 30s, you're near 36, and you're starting to have this optic neuritis. I know that can be devastating because I had, usually that's one of the initial symptoms, and I know I had some bouts with that. Um, pain behind the eye, did you have that? Yes, I did. I recall. Yes, I did. I'm glad you said that. Mm -hmm. I did have some pain behind my eye. Mm -hmm. I ate some blobbing pain. Like, oh my gosh, what is that? Mm -hmm. I had, um, did you have any vision impairment? I know I had, like, a, it looked like a beige thumbprint in, in, in the middle of the vision of one of my eyes. No matter what I looked at, whether I was looking at the television or what, it was, like, dull in color because of this beige thumbprint. In my vision, what did, did what did you have going on with your optic neuritis? Uh, my optic neuritis, uh, I know, I remember now. I remember when I uh, really started having all the pain. I was out on a cruise with some girlfriends of mine, and my eye was flashing like a light bulb, like a um, like a light bulb. It was like it was about to blow out, or you open. 
and then closing the blind. Mm -hmm. It was doing that, like turning off, turning on. And I thought maybe, okay, my contact, I haven't changed my contact in a couple of weeks. That's how we maybe was going on. I expressed what was going on to my, um, my girlfriend. Came back home. Went on the internet. I, could, I typed in a lost vision in the eye where contacts fly over. And the internet said I had an eye infection. So I thought I just needed some eye drops. So, which I finally did go to the hospital to get my eye examined. I told the doctors to give me some eye drops. Mm -hmm. They looked at me like I was crazy, you know, so. Mm. But, yeah, they told me I had uh, multiple sclerosis. I have to admit me in the hospital. So, did they do the MRI and the, and did you say you had a spinal tap? Yeah, a spinal tap on my yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's when, that's, those two tests confirmed that it was multiple sclerosis. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. Um. Okay, now you've already given us um, a lot of detail, but just tell me, tell us about, like in detail, now give us some details about your personal daily MS journey and how it's affecting your life now. Tell us about your personal MS journey. My personal journey, I am um, not able to, to drive like I want, um, I can't walk like I want, I was able able to walk three blocks yesterday for the first time in a, in a, in a long time. That's good. So I used to be a track star, so you understand that I want to get out and just enjoy the first year and walk and see my neighborhood and mm -hmm. my neighbors. But my left side gives out a lot. Um, my, my eyesight, I don't have any major, major relapses. If I do have something, it lasts less than 24 hours, 48 hours. Mm -hmm. I have never been, never been admitted to the hospital, thank God. Right, me either, thank God, you're right about that. But this is my walking, this is my, this my walking and my eyesight. Okay. And this is my pain, I'm in pain. You have pain? Where, where is your pain? Yeah. My left side, this is mainly my left, my, my left leg and sometimes my left arm. Okay. And, and, uh, or do you take medication for that pain? No, I don't take any medication. Is it nerve pain or is it pain like, the kind of pain like arthritic feeling type pain? What kind of pain is it? I think it could be both because sometimes I can feel a tingling sensation in my leg, like, feel like a bunch of wires or a lie, a bunch of I'm say bugs on your legs, just constantly up and down your leg. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes the aching pain, I guess, might be the off mm. But that constant pinging, nagging, that kind of knowing pain, that like feel really good to my nerves. Mm -hmm. That's like, restless leg syndrome. Mm. I guess that's what, that's what you call it. I always wondered what restless leg syndrome was. What if, you know, I'm always wondering, do I have it? <laughs> And then remember I was saying about the sciatic nerves and your, if anybody has experienced that muscle cramp in your butt cheek, it's a sci it's called sciatic nerve and it can go up to your side of your hip, it can affect your whole leg, make your whole leg numb, make your whole leg tingling. Mm. Um, is, so, is, I've heard, I've heard a few people with MS complain about sciatic pain. Is that something that's com common with people with MS? I don't know. I, I, I can't say that because my ex-husband, that's how I learned what it was. He used to get it years back. Uh -huh. So now I, I know what that is. So now I know what, why, you know, what's going on with me. So I have an name for it. So I can't say this for anybody who's going to. Mm-hmm. I don't think so. Have you heard of other people with MS complain about it? Um, just a few. Just a handful. I'm saying maybe like seven, seven people. That's a lot. That's a lot. I've heard, of, mm -hmm. I've heard of about three or four. So I was just wondering, that's a question I, I should ask my neurologist, I guess. But but I understand you're saying you know other people who do not have MS that also have it. Mm -hmm. um, it's so crazy, man. My boyfriend, he had the same symptoms on his left leg, and he doesn't have MS. So. Right. <laughs> and you, so you both share that, <laughs> that common we do. ailment. That's good to have that. That's another part of a support system, right? Yes, ma'am. So your current sy symptoms today are basically um, you still have some some leftover 
um, symptoms from the eye problems. Is that correct? And yes. Okay. And then you still have the, the problem with your left, I think you said your left side, where yes. you experience nerve pain and, and regular pain, and you said some numbness and tingling, and you have to rest and, and relax your leg and ice your leg after you've walked for a while. Yes. Is that right? Um, yes, ma'am. Okay. Is that the extent of your current symptoms? I know you said you don't have many, you don't have many relapses or real relapses. No, that's, that's, that's it. That, that's it. So, your relapses are, I know you said they last less than 24 hours. Those are pseudo-relapses, correct? Yes. Okay, so what kinds of pseudo-relapses do you have? Uh, that's, that's mainly, 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 I, I know one time I, I my arm, um, um I feel like I was having a stroke, so I wasn't really concerned. I didn't know what, the, what was going on. But if it was a food relapse, if it lasted more than 24 hours, then come in and be saying that it was gone before 24 hours was up. So the whole arm um, just go was numb. Mm. And then it just to your, to your shoulder. Wow. And I was really terrified. Because your left side, I feel you have a heart attack or something. And I thought, right? Right. They say your, your left arm feels numb or tingly. So I was really concerned about that. So but things, I mean, I don't, I don't really major, major things going like on. That. that is such a blessing. That is such a blessing. Um. Now here's a question that I like to ask everyone. Um, I ask everyone on my show, and I ask people that I just encounter, you know, out in everyday life that have multiple sclerosis. Um, what symptom do you wish, and I know you only have a couple of major ones, what symptom do you wish would leave and never return? And tell us in detail about why. My eyesight. I would like my whole vision to be normal. So I can drive my car. I miss driving. I've I only been driving for 10 years before um, I got diagnosed. Mm -hmm. So I feel that that must took that away from me. That's um, of independence. Yes. You can't tell that looking at me something is wrong, but I, I know something is wrong. Mm -hmm. So I, um, I don't mind if I show me around, but I want to get up and go when I get ready. Mm -hmm. And at night, I definitely can't see at night. So, <laughs> so at night, is your vision um, impaired? Even even though you're not driving, are you still feeling impairment? Are you <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm mean, gonna pass your side, so you got in the van, and I'm like, oh god, I'm sure we're gonna go, but watch out for that, watch out for that. And, and it just means being paranoid. <laughs> so that's like when you're just walking around and doing things at night, you have impairment in your vision? Uh, uh maybe, yeah, you know, I can wash the concrete, I have to keep my head down, so I won't trip. Oh, wow. I don't belong, yeah, I do have to keep my head down a lot when I'm walking. Hmm. So during the daytime, what kind of vision problems, you know, do you have? What kind of um, impairment are you experiencing? Um, I have my shades because the sun does touch my eyes. I still have to keep my head down to make sure I don't trip over anything or the sidewalk is off balance. So I won't not trip. But I have to have shades. Uh, I keep my shades with me. You wear shades. Do you wear? Do you find that you wear shades even like say like now where it's a little bit cooler in the evenings and fall and winter? Do you wear them if the sun is out just because oh, of yeah. the eye problems? Oh yeah. So yes, that's, that's how do you, what do you have like glare or what? Describe your vision. Um, in the well, eye that's in. I wear glasses. I'm sorry. Describe your vision like in the eye that's impaired. Um, it's looking, it's like looking through a faucet glass window, it's real foggy, and a, a, a glare over it. You can see images flickering, but you can't, you, have, you really can't make it out with your bad eye. And you definitely can't see any color. So you don't see color from the eye that you're having no. problems with? No, I, I don't. It's mine's is like a gray, black, and it gets a white color. Oh, really? Okay. So, um, 
Has MS changed your life in any way? And, and if so, tell us in a lot of detail how. For one, MS made me not to judge people. Everybody is going through something. Uh, made me more, more humble. Mm -hmm. And just look at life is real precious. And we even have one or two years. And I'm just grateful that this is, this is what God, this is what I'm going to do for you. And I, I will accept this. I'm, I'm very grateful. And I just, this is my new, new, new me, my new journey. And, um, I'm not going to let it control me. Mm hmm What, what, th what types of things are you doing to, um, to just embrace it? I mean, I know you're living with it. So, like, how has it changed your life, and how are you living with it or going along with that flow? It's making me more healthier. I'm um, at an age now that I, I love me. So I'm eating right, exercising, staying positive, looking at different things different, like going to a museum and art. For me, this slow down because I was really fast in the beginning so mm -hmm. just really slow down mm -hmm. and don't forget the small stuff right that's good advice don't get stressed easily stressed mm -hmm. when you're sweating the small stuff you're stressing yourself out do you have any children yes I have a 22 year old son okay does he understand exactly what it means for you to have MS? Uh, he's still learning. He's, he has seen when I was younger, when he was younger, me blacking out. So that was his journey. He had to go through it with me. I remember when he was 12 and I was sick, coming out of the hospital, from getting diagnosed, and he had to hold the bucket under my uh, neck to add it up. So it was just he and I at the house by ourselves. Mm -hmm. So I, I think he does, I, he, he does understand, he does understand, because he concerned, he calls me, check up on me. Uh, when he's over here, he's very helpful, he doesn't want me to do too much. Mm -hmm. So if I need him, he's here. He, he's definitely, he'll be here for me if I do need him. So he does show a lot of empathy and concern for you, sounds like it, like he does. Yeah. Um, is he inquisitive at all about, um you know, the different risk factors there are, like genetic, and I know there are several, there are like four risk factors, environment is one. Um, d does he show any concern about that, the genetic part? No, he doesn't. He complained about headaches over a couple of years, the last five years, but he does not want to get tested, he does not want to, maybe he'll change his mind. But right now, he doesn't want to know. I don't blame him. I, I wouldn't if I was just having headaches. I wouldn't. Um, I wouldn't associate that with it, and I wouldn't um, be quick to get tested because of headaches. You know, maybe if I was having some other symptoms like neurological. Um, you know. Um, uh, um I want to ask you this. Um. Who is the most supportive person in your life? And tell us why. I'm going to say my uh, significant other, my um, boyfriend, Silas. Okay. Thanks, Julian. Okay. And why he's, he's, he's there. He's all he knows. Like, so what I, I told him from day one of what, what was going on with me. And uh, he's, I blacked out one of my dates. So that was embarrassing that for, you know, in the beginning, and he said, I guess I'm stuck with you, you know, you're stuck with me. <laughs> That's and, sweet. And you know, he, he's there for me, he cares, he cares, he very much cares for me, so I can't ask for nothing better. Yeah, that's sweet. Have you ever had other previous careers? Oh yes, I was a phlebotomist. Um, in the beginning, I wanted to follow my mother's footsteps, being a nurse. Mm -hmm. uh, my, um, had it, my home daycare, so I raised many, many children, and to this day I still keep in contact with many of them. Oh, wow. 
Is so you were a uh, phlebotomist, and what is that exactly? Blood. When you think you're a blonde, you look dry when you come into the doctor's office. Mm hmm And um, of course, we, okay, that's something interesting. Would that would would your MS now affect that? Like, do you have any neurological problems with your fingers and your steadiness? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I do notice my right hand do have to hold things a little tighter, mm -hmm. and um, I don't shut, especially if I first first got down, I got shook a little bit, but I don't shake anymore, that, was, that lasted for a few months. Okay. But, but now I wouldn't want to, because I wouldn't want to draw the light blood with, it, with my one eye. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> Your vision would, would cause problems with that. Are you... Yeah. Are you going to um, do any more writing? Uh, yes, I'm starting to have second memoir, and uh, I just finished a collaboration with six other authors uh, writing letters to our offenders, defenders, and a child, and letters to survivors. Okay. And that will be out the next two weeks. Did you have, did MS affect your ability to write this last memoir? The whole other book, um, no, the, no, 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 the one that you wrote by yourself, Unbroken. Um, I, I know that this happened, which is my fingers getting on my typing. This, my hands cramped up a lot, but nothing bad. That's, I finished in six months, so not, nothing bad. That was good. Did you have any phys, okay, so that was your, you didn't have any cognitive problems and, and, and you said your fingers cramped a little. That was the only physical problem you had? Yeah. Okay. Um, this is the final question. What final thoughts and words of encouragement would you like to leave us with today? Just don't give up. Don't give up. There's something out there that's going to um, help us in the long run. It's going to be better for the other survivors. It's, we're all part of one puzzle, but you know, we're in different pieces. We're all part of one puzzle. Just you said, just yeah. in different pieces. Different pieces. Well, I would like to thank you so much for uh, joining us today and being part of our show. We've had a wonderful time talking with you. I hope our listeners have enjoyed our conversation, and I want to invite you guys to come back and sit with me again next week. And I want to sign off now because we're at the end of our show. Bye, Mashia. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Bye-bye.